It was one of the happiest moments of my life. I'd graduated in mechanical engineering and I'd landed my first job in a big multinational company. It wasn't great, it was a trainee's job. All I had to do was manually check for errors in a sheet of paper which had arithmetic calculations on it. Two weeks into the job, we received an email from our head office. The company was implementing a new software which would make my role redundant. It hurt. But it was one of the best things to have happened to my career. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you're a student, a teacher, an author, a doctor, lawyer, accountant, you might be thinking, this is not just my personal story, it could be yours. And if this phenomenon is so widespread, is there something we can do about it? So for the past four years, we have been studying this from multiple angles. And today, I hope to share with you what we have learned so that you can take the outcomes of these experiments and future-proof your career. Maybe even save the world. The World Economic Forum predicts that AI will add $16 trillion to the global economy. Now, let me bring that to life for you. You remember the last time your mobile phone battery had died out? Remember how restless you were? Mobile phones are an integral part of our lives. And the mobile phone industry adds $1.1 trillion to the global economy. So look at the impact that mobile phones have had on you. Multiply that by 15. And that's the impact AI is going to have in your life. Pretty scary, isn't it? But can the technology become so good that it becomes bad? Particularly if it gets concentrated in the hands of a few bad actors. There are a lot of people trying to solve this problem, and we believe we have come up with a powerful idea, powerful enough to win a Nobel Prize. And our big idea is the opposite of centralization is decentralization. Now, hang on. That's something we read about in our primary school textbooks. That's not new. It's too simple. Maybe we just lost our claim at a Nobel Prize. But hey, let's imagine a world where AI is democratized, where you have the power of AI to automate parts of your task and the collective power that the world brings about can enhance every aspect of human existence. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm not Elon Musk, who heads an army of rocket scientists. I'm not Sundar Pichai, who's the CEO of Google that has all the data sets in the world for machine learning. I'm not even Andrew Hung the brilliant computer scientist who made AI mainstream. I'm just me. What can I do? Well, what can you do when you lose your job? No one knows it better than me. So when my role was made redundant, my manager came to me and he said, Samir, we don't have a job for you in this office. So please pack your bag and get out. Get out and meet customers. And so I did. And when I started talking to customers, 
I learned about their business problems that we were trying to solve with our widgets. And a startling revelation dawned on me that the sole purpose of any solution to exist is the problem it solves. And that's true for AI. AI can solve problems, but it needs a human to be telling it what problem to solve. And that's where your expertise come in. This is Alex. He doesn't quite look like a computer AI researcher, does he? That's because he's not. He's an economics and finance person, but he's an integral part of our team, our team developing AI products. His role is to go out there and look for business problems to solve. So you don't necessarily need to be Elon Musk to change the world. You just need to get started. The next photograph is for Amit Das Gupta. And Amit spent a lifetime, a career in geography and mapping. And after he retired, his sister on the other end told him all about AI and robotics. And that caught his fancy. So Amit went and taught himself these new technologies. He came back to us as the project manager for a solution we were building to identify corrosion from photographs of industrial assets taken by drones. Now, the branch of science that you use for this kind of application is called deep learning. And like I'd mentioned before, deep learning is popularized by Andrew Ng. In 2012, he used to work for Google, and he fed in 10 million images of cats taken from YouTube videos, and the AI started to recognize the cats. In Amit's project, he needed just 279 images before our AI started to identify corrosion at 92% accuracy. The need for data set reduced from 10 million to 279 in seven years. So the need for data for you to get started is shrinking with every pass, passing advancement in technology. You don't necessarily need to be Sundar Pichai with all the Google data sets. You just need to get started. This was my birthday in 2016. And that's Shrey, our younger son. Shrey ran up to me, hugged me tight. Well, he was nine. So kids still hug their parents. But that's the last it's going to happen, because he turned a teenager a couple of days ago. So he hugged me tight, and he said, Daddy, I've built a special gift for you. And that special gift was a chatbot. A chatbot that would tell jokes to make me laugh. It made me cry. We just started an AI company, and we were talking about chatbots, and Shrey overheard us talk about it. So he went to the internet, and he was able to locate explainer videos that could get a nine-year-old to build his first AI solution. So you don't necessarily need the academic brilliance of an Andrew Ung. You just need to get started. The superhuman AI that we spoke about, it's far away. What's close at hand is 20 22. That's two years away. The World Economic Forum predicts AI will destroy 75 million jobs. 75 million. 
but it'll create another 135 million jobs. So now, we have a choice to make. Do we remain in our comfort zone of skills and wait to get disrupted by AI? Or do we upskill ourselves for jobs of the future? The AI that will be the most useful for human beings in 20 years' time has not even been invented today. There are millions of job openings today for engineers, developers who can build robots, and who can build robots that build other robots. But there is an even larger potential for people who will find a reason for existing for these robots. People who can find use cases for automation. These are experts, these are people with knowledge of the business processes today. These are people like Alex, like Amit, like Shrey. These are people like you, who are experts in sales or finance or marketing or logistics. All you got to do is look for that one job that you hate the most because it's sheer grunt work, it's repetitive. And once you start identifying these opportunities for improvement, you have future-proofed your job. The world of AI is so new, it is aligning all the forces to welcome you into this new world because you have the idea of how to get started with AI. We've come up with a very simple four-step process. You start by exploring, demystify AI. What is it it can do? What is it it cannot do? And once you start doing that, you find your true love in one particular area of, of AI. And you go deeper into it. You build some, some e-learning courses, and, and, and you start learning um, through community engagement, through mentors who can actually walk you along the way. After you've built those initial set of skills, you start experimenting. Now the world over, every AI project starts with a little experiment called a proof of concept, which is a brilliant opportunity for you to try out your newly acquired skills. You might even earn a living outside your day job. And once your expertise level increases, you become a mentor to the rest of the cohort coming in. This is when you give back to the community. This is when that selfless act makes you famous and influencer. Till you decide it's time to learn another area of AI. And that's how the whole cycle of permanent beta rolls on to democratize AI. It's actually very simple. John Kennedy once famously said that the Chinese right crisis with two brush strokes, one stands for danger, the other opportunity. So if you are worried about robots taking your jobs away, or if you're losing sleep over the existential threat of humanity being taken over by that superhuman rogue AI, please don't waste such a good crisis. Your career needs you. Your world needs you. All you need to do is just get started. Thank you.